Okay, hello everyone. So thank you for coming to our session. Um, and today we're gonna learn about eye health. Um, and Dr. Alex, Alexa is going to be uh, presenting today and speaking. So thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having me. Um, so I'm gonna be discussing a few things today. Um, so I just named it Eye Health 101. Um, so we'll get started. So um, just a little <coughs> intro, I was born in Winnipeg, Canada, and that's where I did my undergrad. So I studied psychology and biology, and I did all the prerequisite courses to become an optometrist. And then I got my optometry degree at University of Waterloo, and I graduated uh, in 2021. And now I practice in Toronto um, in two different clinic locations. So here's what we're gonna go through today. So um, a day in the life as an optometrist, basic anatomy of the eye, um, some common eye conditions, some eye myths that I'm going to debunk, and then things you can do to help support your eye health and why I chose optometry. And then we're gonna end with a blink exercise. Okay, so this is sort of what a typical day in the life looks like as an optometrist. Of course, it varies, uh, but usually I have a bit of time in the morning to kind of get ahead of the day, work out, um, do whatever I need to do. And then I usually start seeing patients around 10 um, and I finish up charts and then I have my lunch break and I either go for a walk or sometimes I'll record some TikToks. And then um, I finish seeing patients at around 5, 5.30. Um, I go home, I finish charting if I need to and then cook dinner and hang out. And just some eye basics in case anyone um, is interested. I'll go pretty, pretty basic, but um, this is a cross section of the eye. So um, right here, this is the front surface of the eye. It's called the cornea. Um, it is basically where light enters the eye. Um, then we have the colored part of your eye, which is your iris. So no two irises are alike. It's basically like your fingerprint for your eye. Um, and it's um, basically it constricts and then it dilates your pupil. So depending on the lighting conditions, um, that's why your pupil looks either larger or smaller. Um, and then we go back and we have the lens. So that's uh, light gets carried through there and then it gets all the way back onto the retina and carried to the brain. Um, so this is also the back of the eye or also known as the retina. Uh, so the retina is a bunch of different layers and um, it's basically where light is uh, transformed into energy and that signal is sent to our brain and that's when we see. So it contains cone cells, rod cells. Um, cone cells are what carry um, color um, and central vision and then rods are black and white and peripheral vision um, and then right here where your blind spot is that's your optic nerve so information gets sent to the brain through the optic nerve um, and then another important part is called the macula and the fovea is right in the center of that and that's your central vision so that's your clearest vision whenever you're looking at something that's what you're using Um, so I'm going to go through a couple of common eye conditions. I don't want to bore you, so I'm not going to go through all of them, but I'm going to go through the first couple. And then if you have any questions at the end, and feel free to let me know. Myopia or nearsighted. So I'm just going to play the short clip on the first one. Myopia or nearsightedness is where the distance between the cornea and the retina is too long. Light rays focus in front of the retina instead of on it. With myopia, close objects will look clearer, but distant objects will appear blurred. So I'm not sure if any of you wear glasses for distance, but um, that's what you have. You're nearsighted or you have myopia is the other term for it. And basically, um, you can correct that with glasses, with contacts, um, and with LASIK surgery. Um, so how to prevent myopia from progress progressing? So 
It's believed by 2025, 50% of the population will be nearsighted. Um, so it's a huge kind of issue that's going on right now, um, especially in children because of our devices and, and just our learning environment. Everything is really up close. So there's a few things to do to slow the progression. Um, so spending time outdoors has been shown, um, taking breaks from our screens, um, holding devices further away. So if you're on a cell phone, not having it on your nose, <laughs> Um, pushing it a little further back um, or if you're on a desktop or a laptop having it on a desk at least you know arm's length away um, and then there's some newer technologies that have been shown to slow the progression so ortho k lenses are actually a, a, a hard contact lens you sleep when um, and you wake up and then you take it out and you have corrected eyesight for the day so you don't need to wear glasses or contacts throughout the day that's actually been shown, shown to help slow the progression of myopia. And then there's other uh, soft contact lenses and specific lenses um, for glasses that are also helped to slow the progression of myopia. Astigmatism is when the cornea is unevenly curved. Usually the eye is round like a baseball, but with astigmatism, it is more oval shaped like a football. Light passing through this unevenly shaped cornea is not properly focused on the retina. Distance and close vision may both appear blurry. So a lot of you might also have astigmatism. Um, it's a pretty common thing to have. It's not a disease, it's just how we, the way you are. Um, and here are some things, um, some symptoms. So blurred vision at distance or near. So astigmatism also can be corrected with contacts, glasses, and laser. And um, you might have trouble distinguishing rounder letters. So like, oh, see, you might mix those up. Uh, you might get halos around lights or glare at night. And then you also might have trouble reading. You might get double vision uh, or headaches. So those are some symptoms. Normally, the eye's lens is clear, allowing light rays to pass through and focus as they should on the retina. As a cataract forms, the lens gradually becomes cloudy. As light passes through this cloudy lens, it cannot focus clearly on the retina, and objects look hazy or blurred. So cataracts are a condition, they're an age-related change in the eye, so uh, usually it's in older patients, but there can be can be born with a cataract or uh, develop them younger. And like they said, it's clouding of the lens inside your eye. So things might appear more yellow or more hazy or more blurry or glare might bother you more at night. Um, so I'll show you a picture of one. So here's what it looks like when I take a look in and the eye is dilated. This is a pretty advanced cataract here, um, but you can see it has that star shape appearance there. Um, so how to prevent cataracts, protect your eyes from UV rays with sunglasses, the most important thing. Um, you wanna make sure the glasses are protecting against UVA and UVB rays, and you wanna wear them even when it's cloudy out or snowy. Um, you always want to be wearing sunglasses. Uh, number two is having a healthy diet and exercising. Um, I mean, you're always told this, but uh, people who are diabetic or have high blood pressure can actually develop cataracts earlier. Um, and then avoiding or quitting smoking. Smoking does lead to cataracts. Okay, so here are some eye myths. Uh, I'm gonna debunk some common ones. So number one, eating carrots will improve your vision. <clears throat> so here are some facts. So carrots do contain vitamin A, which is good for your night vision. Um, so carrots are in fact good for your overall health and good for your eyes, but there are lots of other things that are good for your eyes. So eating a bunch of carrots um, sounds kind of boring to me. Um, I would give yourself some more variety, um, eat the rainbow. And lots of things have vitamin A, like uh, leafy greens and spinach, um, and even fish. So it won't prevent the need for you to have glasses. It's just healthy and it supports your eye health. 
Um, wearing glasses will make you dependent on them. So no, this is not true. Um, you might start liking the way you are seeing with your glasses and thus you might wear them more often, but you aren't gonna be dependent on them. Um, so it won't make your vision worse, which is that's a common myth. Um, that wearing my glasses, I'm going to have worse vision. Um, there's actually been studies that have shown that, especially in children who are still developing and who are nearsighted, that if they're not wearing their glasses or wearing an undercorrected prescription, that can actually worsen their prescription. So it is important that you are wearing the correction you need. Um, eye exercises will improve your vision. So. The eye exercises, there's, no been, there's been no scientific evidence to prove this. Um, so it won't change the, the need for you to have glasses. Um, there are some eye exercises that we can do to help you know, our convergent system. So that's when you're looking up at something up close, your eyes go in. So some people struggle with that and there's vision therapy that helps to kind of teach you how to do that, that more efficiently. Reading in dim light is harmful for your eyes. Um, so it won't harm your eyes, but it may help reduce eye strain and headaches. So I always recommend reading with some sort of light, but um, it's not going to damage your eyes if you are reading in dim light. And then I had to have a full slide for this. Um, the truth about blue light blockers, because I know this is a very common thing out there. So there is no scientific evidence that blue light is damaging to our eyes. So that's what a lot of the the companies are claiming is that you know we need to protect our eyes because it's damaging our retina and our macula. Uh, there's been no studies to prove that. Blue light does affect our sleep cycle though and our melatonin levels. So I always do recommend putting some sort of filter on your phone or your uh, your laptop if you're going to be using it late into the night. Um, just to help regulate your sleep cycle. I just turn on night shift mode and I find that works. Um, and then there's also no scientific evidence or uh, evidence of that it causes digital eye strain. Okay, so here are five things that you can do today to, to better your eye health. Uh, wear sunglasses, even when it's cloudy, like I said. Get regular eye exams. So I don't know, it varies from state to state, province to province, but at least where I'm practicing in Toronto, um, up until 19, the government will cover you every year. And then every two years after that, most insurance will cover you. Um, eat lots of vegetables, especially dark leafy greens and then take breaks from your devices. So the 2020 rule, every 20 minutes, look at something 20 feet away for at least 20 seconds. So get up, walk around, uh, just stare into the distance. It relaxes our focusing system and doesn't cause our eyes to go into over focusing basically. And then spend time outdoors. Um, and then here's a little tidbit on why I chose optometry. So it's a four-year program after your undergraduate degree. Um, there's an optional one-year residency. I didn't choose to do a residency, but some, some people do. Um, it totally depends if you want to specialize in something like pediatrics or contact lenses. Um, optometry offers a great work-life balance. So um, you can work part-time if you want. You can you know own your own business. Um, there's no call shifts. Uh, optometrists, at least in Canada and the States, are rarely in like a hospital setting. There are some in the States, but not in Canada. Um, but there's also different fields within optometry. So you can work in the industry, you can work corporate optometry. So like you're working in a Costco or Walmart. Um, you can do research, private practice, specialize. Um, and then there's also room for business opportunities. So you can open your own clinic and do your own boss and that's kind of what I liked about optometry. Okay so this I think is fun so uh, we are constantly staring at our screens and we forget to blink so I'm going to teach you how to blink. Um, so everyone gently close your eyes and then pause, pause, then gently squeeze your eyes but don't move your facial muscles so it's kind of harder to do and then open and relax. And you're gonna, after this, you're gonna do that five times. 
um, and that trains our, our blink reflexes how to properly blink again because a lot of us don't actually have complete blinks so um, that can lead to dry eye and uh, discomfort um, so it is important to remind yourself to blink. There's actually an app you can get I don't know the exact name that it every like five minutes it'll tell you to take a blink break <laughs> Yeah, and these are my um, references. And this is where you can find me on social media. I'm on TikTok and Instagram. And feel free to message me with any other questions you have, um, or if you just want to chat. Um, I'm usually pretty good at responding. And I think we can do some questions now. Okay, so thank you so much. That was very like, especially the banana thing. My mom always tells me to have bananas. It really helps your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that was really informative. Thank you. No problem. Um, and I think we do have some questions. So if anyone has questions, you can put it in the chat um, and I'll read them out. So first, um, so phones, so um, Kim wants to, um, ask so phone or screen time enhances the progression of myopia but does not cause it necessarily um so how do I put this? so it's 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 not directly that like our phones are screens are what's causing kind of coarsening of myopia it's mm -hmm. constantly staring up close so when we're looking at things up close our our eye is focused up close um and so it's it's using certain muscles to kind of look at something and focus on something up up close um and so many many years ago you know our our world wasn't all within this kind of area um we were looking at boards and we were looking at things further away so this wasn't a huge problem but now that you know everyone has a laptop everyone's doing on their digital devices constantly we're seeing that progression and we're seeing um the effects of it so um when you're looking at like a tv or something further away at least six feet your eyes are relaxed and they're not they're not focusing um, as much okay that makes sense thank you for explaining the next question we have is, um, I heard some people when younger start off with nearsighted vision, then as they get older, it turns to farsighted vision. So is there like a specific reason for that? So usually that just has to do with changes inside the eye. So um, I, I think maybe they're referring to what's called presbyopia. So basically what that is, is um, the, our, our muscles, they're not exactly sure what causes it, but they think it has to do with the lens inside of our eyes starts to get thicker and less flexible. So we have more issues focusing up close and reading. That's why people need reading glasses. Um, so yes, that is a change. Usually it occurs around 42. Um, depending on your prescription, you might see the effects earlier or later. Um, but also, yeah, so it, it does have to do with changes inside of our eye and the anatomy of the eye. Okay. okay. Sounds good. So, and then we had another question. If it would help in general, like for eyes, I'm guessing, to study outside, not indoors? Um, not necessarily. It's getting outside is good, but it's also about like walking around outside and playing and not like, you know, doing the same thing outside as you would inside. So mm -hmm. um, I would say just as long as you're not holding your, your reading materials super close and as long as you're taking those consistent breaks, um, that's mm -hmm. that's what you can do to help yourself. Okay. I mean, studying outside sounds great, so do yeah. that if you want. <laughs> okay. It's like a preference too. Okay, so um, the next question is, since medical information is being constantly updated, how do optometrists, op optometrists, how do you guys learn about the new research that are, that is like consistently being updated or if something comes proved false? Yeah, so in order to keep like our license or keep renewing our license, we have to 
meet a minimum requirement of um, continuing education lectures. So I have to attend at least 70 hours um, every three years. Uh, it varies also again from state to state. Mm -hmm. um, so, and I'm also just on my own constantly, you know, reading articles and keeping up with the information because I want to be able to provide uh, the best possible advice for my patients. So uh, it's some learning on my own and some being, I'm constantly learning with, from other people too. And then as an optometrist, like what professions do you work closely with? Um, so ophthalmology is the other profession we refer to. So uh, they did go to medical school um, and they did a residency and a fellowship. So it's quite specialized. Um, and they do surgery. So I don't have the ability to remove a cataract, they do. Um, so we, we do work closely with them. I also work closely with uh, GPs or general practitioners who uh, manage patients' diabetes because a lot of people with diabetes have eye problems. So they come and see me. Um, yeah, those are the two main ones I would say. Okay. So like what conditions usually, um, I guess common, more common conditions like diabetes seem more like eye problems? Yeah, so diabetes um, is probably the most common one I see. Um, there can be little bleeds in the back of the eye uh, with the blood vessels. Um, it can severely cause swelling in the central part of your vision, your macula. Um, hypertension is another one. I've actually detected pretty high um, blood pressure in someone who had no idea, just based on what I saw in their retina. And then we can also detect things like herpes and STDs and, um, I mean, cancer, uh, mm -hmm. tumors. Uh, we can detect MS early, so multiple sclerosis. Um, and then a lot of autoimmune diseases can be found in the eye. Okay. Wow. I yeah. didn't know that. <laughs> I know. It's pretty crazy. Yeah. Um, and then we have a question. What is the most dangerous or scary eye problem you've ever encountered or learned about? Um, probably, and I didn't touch on this, but I should have, uh, people who sleep in their contact lenses or over wear their contact lenses. I've seen pretty severe corneal ulcers. Um, so that's like, or that's sight threatening. So you can lose your vision in that if that ever occurs and it's really bad. Um, that's probably the scariest thing I've seen. Um, trying to think. Yeah, so never sleep in your contact lenses. <laughs> so I actually had a question. Um, so when you go to the doctor and they give us like a number, like for example, like 20 to out of 20, like perfect vision, like what does that actually mean? Like what are they saying? So um, it's, it's the way we measure. So 2020, so there's actually 2015 vision, um, but it has to do with the distance you're reading and the size of the letters. So 20 feet away um, and the top number, or sorry, the bottom number, so it's 2020. So then a line worse than that is 2025. Um, so the 20 stays constant and then the other number changes. Um, so, yeah, 2020 vision isn't perfect. <laughs> 2015 okay. vision is um, a little better. <laughs> so you should ask next time if you can see the, the lower line. Yeah. Okay. And do you have another question? Um, how long does it take to go blind from a bright object like the sun? Um, I'm not exactly sure. So maybe I, like how like affects your eye maybe? Like staring at oh, the yeah. sun? Oh yeah, so the time? sun is, is it's not good to stare at the sun. That is not safe for your eyes because it can lead to like cataracts and it can cause damage to your macula, your central vision. Um, it's just not good for you. But um, I don't know if like you would be able to bear staring at the sun and like it would, you'd be able to do it long enough that you would actually go blind from it. Um, I, I've never heard of that happening. So <laughs> okay, I'm not sure about that. Um, and then I have another question. So 
how much like screen time or like I guess TV um, and just all of those devices how much can they hurt your eyes and like how much is like too much screen time for your eyes so I mean I know people in school and people working rely on their screen so I'm mm -hmm. I, it's not that it's damaging for your eyes it's just it can lead to things like dry eye and digital eye strain so as long as you're keeping tabs and maybe not spending your whole day on it um, mm -hmm. it's it's more dangerous for kids who are still developing so um, you know I always say like max two hours a day for kids um, but obviously you guys who are in high school or university like two hours a day isn't realistic right so um, just making sure you're again taking breaks and walking around and blinking <laughs> um, that's that's what you can do do you like blue i know there's something about blue ray glasses do those help yeah i had a slide on that um, okay i i was yeah so basically there's no scientific evidence that blue light is damaging to our eyes mm -hmm. so i do recommend um kind of using night shift mode if you're going to be on your computer late because it does help with your circadian rhythm so your sleep cycle um, but it's not damaging to your eyes, so you don't need to be wearing blue light blockers all day. Okay. Thank you. Um, and also, would you be able to like share these slides or anything? Uh, yeah, I can send a PDF. Of them. Okay. Okay, that would be perfect. Um, and then lastly, I'm going to end with like two questions, um, or one question. How often should we go see an optometrist? So um it depends if you have some sort of eye condition the optometrist has told you we want to see you every year or every six months then definitely follow that um, i would say every year to two years is a good amount of time um, as you're still developing so i usually say up until 20 you should be going every year because your eyes can change mm -hmm. um and i see patients as young as three months old um so it's, it's important to get checked young because we can detect things like eye turns and issues with the optic nerve. Um, yeah, so I would say every one to two years. Okay. okay. I think it's time for me to go now. Um, okay, so I, that's all the questions that we have. And if there's any more questions, um, I think you can put it in the chat or also yeah. just I guess DM doctor. Yeah, for sure. Um, and is there anything else you want to end with or anything you want to say? I don't think so. I think I basically said all I wanted to share, but thank you guys okay. for listening. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for coming in. That was great. That was a very awesome. interesting session. And I know I everyone enjoyed with it. everything. Thank you. Bye. Yes. Bye.